Okay. I'm user Yuri Basilis from uh, Structural Engineering, and uh, I'll be talking about simulation of wind turbine rotors at, uh, at full scale, and I'd like to thank the organizers for letting me present this research at this uh, symposium. I'd like to acknowledge my group, Ming Chen Su and Ira Ackerman, a PhD student, a postdoc of mine, uh, Dave Benson, who is actually a PI on the uh, CSRO grant, uh, is a neighbor of mine in structural engineering. This is really an international effort, also that involves some schools. We have a partnership with Rice University and uh, Technical University of Munich. In, in, in okay, so let me start with uh, some statistics. So, so this is my sales pitch. And uh, if you read the, the, the newspapers or, or, or follow the developments in alternative energy, you see that the U.S. government established an objective of 25% electricity from wind by 2025. And uh, if you compare to today's numbers, see how much electricity comes from wind, this is an increase of 1,200%, okay, a 12-fold increase that needs to happen in the span of short uh, 15 years, okay. So this, this figure is quite daunting, and uh, clearly, if we want to be there, we're going to need a leading-edge wind energy research and development, okay, to achieve this, uh, this, this, this goal. And we feel a part of it is, is advanced simulation, okay. Exp uh, one of the reasons why I want to do simulation is, is because experiments are costly and often impossible. Sort of a fact I want to cite, if you look at a 1.5 megawatt wind turbine, this is sort of a medium size on-land design, it will cost you to manufacture and install half a million dollars. Okay? If you want to go to offshore designs that are about 4 to 5 megawatts, imagine what this uh, number is going to go up to. Okay? So advanced simulation methods are necessary, will allow us to evaluate current wind turbine designs, predict failure due to operation loads, and uh, optimize designs for uh, better performance and allow you to look at uh, other issues such as noise generation and, uh, and so forth. And in a lot of the Department of Energy reports, you see that it's f in fact it's a rotor assembly, so the blades, okay, that recognizes a major opportunity for advancement in, 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 in performance. So what are some of the challenges involved? As I said, we feel that advanced simulation is necessary, and by advanced simulation, I mean three-dimensional, time-dependent, multi-scale, multi-physics processes. Okay? However, if you want to simulate wind turbines at full scale, you, 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 you're faced with the challenges of problem size and, 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 and complexity. Okay? We come from structural engineering. We're interested in the mechanics questions that are embedded in, in wind turbines. And we're interested in coupling fluid and structural mechanics. So on the fluid mechanics side, you have very high Reynolds number turbulent flow, okay, which requires increased resolution in, uh, in, in three dimensions. On the structural side, you have long, slender, thin structures, multi-layer composite materials, all of which needs to be accounted in, the, uh, in, the, in your modeling. So if you look at the recent works, there are few, and there are few recent works only because the problem is so large and involves a lot of challenges. You see standalone fluid mechanics simulations, okay, at reduced scale and simplified geometry. You also see standalone structural analyses of rotor blades under assumed load conditions. However, you do not see anybody tackling this as a couple problem. So what we're in fact is faced with is a couple problem, a problem of fluid structure interaction. The wind impacts the blades, the rotor rotates, the blades deform, and they change the aerodynamic. Okay? And in order to model things appropriately, you need to solve a coupled system of equations. Let me digress a little bit and show you some of the fluid structure interaction phenomena. Okay? This is some of the work we're doing with the Army Corps of Engineers. And here you're seeing a, a, a ship, full scale, okay, a ship hull, and, and in head waves. Okay? So here the fluid is the water okay, and the waves. They're interacting with the ship hull. So they're producing forces on the hull. The hull displaces, it bobs up and down, okay? And that changes the fluid mechanics around the hull. So problems like this needs to be solved in a coupled way. This is large scale. Fluid structure interaction problems exist at the small scale, okay? This is our other project, is in uh, cardiovascular blood flow. In fact, some of the work is happening next door where we're trying to, to take output of our simulation results and, and visualize it in the immersive sort of three-dimensional uh, environment. But here you see blood flow interacting with the, with the arterial wall. We're looking at a patient-specific cerebral aneurysms. And simulations like this allow us to give information about uh, the distribution of blood flow, uh, deformation of the arterial wall, stresses in the wall. We can look at other quantities of hemodynamic interest that are of interest to, to physicians and 
and clinicians in order to make assessment as to what to do with the uh, with uh, situations like this, okay? But let's go back to wind turbines. That's another example of fluid structure interaction, and this is a basic operation, okay? You're looking at a horizontal axis wind turbine. The wind comes from here. The inflow of wind activates the rotor and blades, okay? Rotor and blades spin the main shaft, the gearbox, spins the generator, and results in an electrical output, okay? So the system is quite, uh, quite simple at that level. So what's happening on the aerodynamic side? If you take a look at the wind turbine blade, you take a cross section, it's an airfoil, okay? So a lot of the design ideas come from uh, aerodynamics, and you see the following situation. You see the wind direction, the wind's coming from here. This is direction of rotation. And what happens is the forces distribute itself, the wind forces distribute itself around the airfoil such that there is a component of the lift vector in the direction of rotation. Okay, so it may seem like a little unusual. It rotates this way, shouldn't it resist the, the forces of, 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 of wind? In fact, this is not what happens. Okay, so this is the main idea. So you see this, this force on the torque that's generated and it propels the wind turbine to go around. And of course, this all needs to be predicted in a three-dimensional uh, in a three-dimensional way. Now, on the structural side, there are challenges that are involved in the geometry. Okay, so you're talking about the very particular airfoil type geometries that need to be uh, created, very smooth. Very, you need to be done very carefully, and also you have materials. The skins are typically made of of of, uh, of composite materials. You know, double bias, triaxial fiberglass, and sometimes you add balsa wood and foam core. And you have structural reinforcement elements like spar caps and, 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 and shear webs. Okay? All of this needs to be accounted for in the, uh, in the modeling. So what we're doing is we're taking blade definitions okay, in terms of airfoil cross-sections. We take the airfoil cross-sections and we string them together to create models for blades okay, that we use in, 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 in simulation afterwards. So here's the individual blade, and then we'll put the blades and the hubs together to create the, uh, to create the rotor. Okay? So here we're looking at a structural model of the, uh, of, of the rotor. Now we need to immerse this guy into the fluid. Okay? So there are challenges in terms of mesh generation where we have to create a fluid domain around the rotor. Okay? So you can see some of the details of the problem setup. And, and, and of the mesh, and you can see that we're actually tackling these problems at full scale. Okay? So in particular, the simulations I'm going to show you make use of a 63-meter rotor, which is 180 foot in radius. This is an offshore-type designs. We're looking at wind speeds of 9 to 12 meters a second, which are, again, characteristic of, uh, of offshore wind conditions. So when you're looking at problems of this size and, and complexity, there's no commercial software that you can, uh, that you can bring to bear these problems okay so you have to write in-house research software and uh, and we're computing these things on hundreds of processors so we're still looking at the high performance computing uh, system here so these are the types of the things you can expect okay so here's a rotor that rotates the blades are deflecting you cannot see it at least in this view I'll, I'll, I'll show some animation, more animations later, but you can see the complexity of fluid mechanics. Okay? You see significant, a lot of turbulent, turbulent features being shed off of the uh, trailing edges of the, of the airfoils. Okay? You see the formation of what's called a tip vortex that persists for a long time. Okay? So all this turbulence in the tip vortex are the sources of, of noise that people don't like so much about these, uh, these designs. Okay? If you're looking at the blade, and if you look at the distribution of a traction vector, which is a force per unit area, you project it onto the plane of rotation, okay, you see that you're indeed picking up a component of the traction in the direction of rotation. Okay, and this is what's dragging the blade around. So we're able to reproduce these phenomena. You also see that most of the torque comes from here. Okay? So the region of the, of the blade that's very close to the tip. So when you're designing these things, you have to pay very close attention to make sure that you put the right airfoils here. And if we compare our data with data provided by the uh, National, uh, N NREL, National Renewable Energy Lab, we're predicting the same level of, uh, of, of aerodynamic torque. Now we can take the aerodynamic torque, multiply by the speed of rotation, and we get the power, okay? The amount of power that we're extracting from, from, from the wind, okay? And if we, if we perform the computation, we get about 2.9 megawatts for this particular speed of rotation and, and, and wind condition. There's something called the Betts law, okay? Which is the maximum amount of power a wind turbine can extract from the wind. And we're looking at a design that's 90% efficient, okay? Which is quite good even for modern wind turbine designs. 
And here I'm showing a component of the velocity in the direction of the axis, okay? Which I'm showing here is that the three-dimensional effects, time-dependent, are very important for this, uh, for this problem class, okay? So here you're seeing a different view, okay? Looking at it from the side, you can see that the blades are bending into the wind, okay? And we'll address that uh, problem shortly. And you also see significant amounts of turbulent activity, okay? To really see the fluid structure interaction effect, we can place the camera at the tip of the blade and rotate the camera together with the rotor. So that's what you see. You see significant structural deformations. You see the trailing edge turbulence and you're actually seeing that the blade is, is shaking a little bit, okay? So you see that the, the, the loads that are induced by the turbulent flow are actually influencing the response of the blade, okay? And so what this tells us is we need a slightly better blade design to, 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 to mitigate some of, this, uh, some of this vibration. And so you can study fundamental physics, but uh, you can also do some practical things with it, okay? So for example, if you design your rotor to be this, okay, just a straight rotor like this, you can have wind coming in, and if the wind is strong enough, your blades are going to bend so much that it may hit the tower, okay, and then all, and this is the end, okay. And so what you'd like to do is, is come up with a configuration, okay, a pre-bent configuration like this, such that when you mount the rotor, and it's rotating, and you have wind coming in, the rotor snaps into the design configuration like this. Okay, so for this, you need to come up with a, uh, with a so-called pre-bend of the wind turbine blades. And again, this is where simulation and modeling comes into play. I mean, how is it that you come up with a, uh, with a shape like this? And this is one of our more recent developments. We're able to take rotors like this and, 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 and come up with, uh, with, with pre-bend shapes that during operating conditions gives you something that you designed for in the, uh, in the first place. So let me throw in a few concluding remarks. We see that due to the problem size and complexity, advanced simulation for wind energy is lacking, and it's being addressed in, in this research. We we'll develop a unique set of, of, of computational tools for fluid structure interaction modeling of wind turbines. We can study fundamental physics and look at engineering applications like pre-bending of blades that we can then send back to the, uh, to the manufacturing. And of course, we're looking at other issues. This work is supported by several sources, including a CSRO and uh, Dave Benson is a PI in this grant and he's helping us out with some of the uh, structural modeling. And of course, happy birthday, KLIT squared. So I'll stop here.